Hey there, welcome back to the Lead Gen HQ podcast. I'm your host, Alex. In today's episode, I'm going to talk to you about a significant development in the world of lead generation. This was the FCC's ruling on robocalls and robotexts. Uh, the decision is really set to change the lead generation landscape. And we're going to just explore what this means to for, for businesses, uh, but as well as uh, the, the different lead generation companies, aggregators, and more importantly, like what does that mean for consumers? So let's get right into it. So understanding the FCC's ruling. So the, the announcement that the FCC made on December 13th of 2023, so it's been about a month, it marks the pivotal moment uh, in consumer protection, which I, even though I'm in, I've been in the lead generation industry for 15 years, this is something that's, uh, I think, uh, a positive movement in the industry. I know a lot of other companies that don't feel that way. Obviously, for them, it means they have to change their business model and figure out a better way of making money, not just being a broker. Um, we're going to unpack that for you. But it really focuses on closing the loopholes that have allowed on it, it's allowed unwanted robocalls and robotexts, right? So it extends the do not call list protections to also text messages and enforcing stricter consent rules for the lead aggregators, lead generation companies who are typically just broker. You know, they're buying traffic from uh, a publisher, they're buying traffic from third party platforms, and then they are reselling that data to the advertiser and or the marketplace, right? Uh, so that data just goes through a lot of different hands before the advertiser gets it. And then they're going to call that either a consumer or business. But again, they're selling those leads three, four, you know, in the insurance space, 10 times. I mean, it's just incredible that, you know, it's been really more than 15 years since the business has been done that way. Uh, actually, if I go back to lending tree days and service magic days in the, the uh, home improvement and construction industry, when I started in lead gen, that was actually 2005. So that's nearly 20 years, 19 years. And at that time, what today is Angie, but before this, it was uh, service not, not service magic, but um, home advisor. And before it was home advisor, it was service magic, you know, a, a, a marketplace for homeowners and home improvement contractors to be matched. I mean, even I'm talking 2005, literally, even in those days, you know, service magic was buying leads um, from multiple publishers. These are other, you know, at the time, a lot of bloggers, because there wasn't a lot of social media at that time, but buying leads from email publishers that, you know, email is one of the best channels that have existed in all this time. But, you know, they're buying leads at one leg of the lead. And what would happen is that contractor would share that lead with four or five other contractors. Imagine you're the homeowner, you get a call, but you're getting three, four, five, 10 calls. And you know what? This happens today too, because I recently bought a car. Um, and in the process of buying that car, I put my name in one of the uh, forms directly on a dealership website. And of course, they probably share that lead because I, I didn't do it on a marketplace. It was directly on an advertiser um, website. And they probably monetized that lead, sold it to some other list management company who then resold it. And all I know is for like a good month and a half, I was getting phone calls and I was getting texts and it was getting really annoying and also emails. And it took me, took me some work, you know, probably 15, 20 minutes out of my time to be able to go block those people. And that's because of this loophole. So a, as a business owner in the lead generation side, I, I understand that there are changes that are going to impact everybody. However, on the consumer side, I think overall it's the, the regulation is positive. So let's just break down some of the changes that, that are going to entail how that's going to impact the uh, industry, right? So for lead generation uh, companies, the ruling introduces significant challenges, first of all. So a lot of these companies that are doing um, uh, just brokering, so they're not actually generating the lead, meaning it's not their website. And um, they're just basically taking a lead and reselling it to an advertiser in whatever industry, it could be law, could be insurance, could be automotive, any industry, right? 
the thing is that the requirement for a one-to-one -one consumer consent means the big shift in how the leads are gathered and shared. So if you're a broker, this is not going to work. Most brokers work on a system called the ping post system. And the ping post system, I mean, I, I was introduced to it in 2009. So I've been working on that for 15 years. I've had multiple platforms and websites that we've built working with ping post. The first one that I built was in 2013, but then we worked with companies like Lead Capsule, Bobberdoo, uh, Lead Prosper, and, and many others in the industry that do such a phenomenal job. And then you connect it to tools like Active Prospect and Jornaya for Lead ID. So there's all these components, you know, verifying leads through XVerify. Uh, you're obviously connecting all the reporting for attribution. So really complex um, process, to say the least, you know, to build a business around the system called Ping Post. Um, but you're able to make a margin on every lead that you sell you're happy, the buyer is happy, the consumer is happy, everybody's happy, right? But it's the pro the problem is the 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 bad apples in the industry. And by the way, it's not most of them. Most people do this the right way. That's the truth. You know, I've been going to these conferences for 15 years. Most most lead generation companies do a good job, whether they're small or large. They they're they're legit companies, but then you have some bad apples just like we do in every industry that ruin it for everybody else right? But uh, it does affect the process for both the lead generator and the buyer uh, in, in that perspective. Um, and what strategies can be employed to navigate the, these new waters? Because you can't just simply say, well, I, I was a broker uh, and now I'm just going to change my business model and generate leads on my site. It doesn't work that way. It could take you five years to build up a website that has a good directory, that has got good SEO, that generate leads uh, on a regular basis. So it's not as easy as, as it sounds again. Now, as far as the, the response and the strategies from companies in the industry, it's been kind of all over the place. Some of the leaders like active prospect or lead prospect, they're taking, um, they're, they're adapting to the changes, right? Because, um, it, some of the solutions that have been, uh, pitched is called the ping pick post system. So it'd be a little bit different because again, it's a one-to-one. -one. So for the consumer, it means they, before they get the, before their information is given to the advertiser, to the brand, right? Or the company before it's given to them, they have to know who they are. So the, the, the technology right now is not all there. Uh, and the FCC has indeed extended the uh the regulation. It was supposed to be go in place right now in January, but then they extended out six months. So the bottom line is like when I look at where AI is at with the lack of regulation, where Section 230 is, we're going to talk in the next episode about the end of cookies with Google. There's a lot of compliance regulations that need to be in place. Otherwise, it's a it's great for companies to basically, you know, whore out people's information without any recourse, but um, it's not good for consumers. You know, so what the future holds for lead generation companies that are in the middle, and these typically are small companies, you know, doing a couple million in revenue, small teams. But I personally know of a lead generation company that does a lot of brokering. They do about 20 million a year in revenue with a team of 40 people. So it's going to impact a lot of different companies. Uh, we, we, we started working to change our model um, more than a year ago. So we're, we're prepared. And if you're in that world, I, I know that it's going to be tough, but, you know, keep, um, stay, stay, uh, stay ahead of the curve by understanding what, what needs to be done so that when the time comes, you are ready. And so the other implications of the ruling that they're looking at is, um, how can a lead, um, but, but basically it's how it can lead to more qualified and interested consumer connections, right? And the importance of staying um, w ahead of the, the the curve with innovation is, it's just, these are, these are things that are very important. I think that in the lead, like online lead generation space, it's something that a lot of companies have looked the other way because big platforms in every industry, you know, whether it's the legal industry, medical, financial, companies like LendingTree, and, and just, you know, in the construction space, so many marketplaces for so many years just were interested in 
you know, making money. Let me, let me grow, let me grow. And uh, at the end of the day, the consumers were left behind. So, you know, as we na navigate these regulatory changes, we're learning as we go and try to make those changes ahead of the curve, uh, which is very hard to do because sometimes you lose customers that way, but that's okay. I think that's going to happen with cookies too and some of the other regulations, but it's about adapt adaptability and innovation. Th those are the keys, you know, and that's the takeaway I want you if you're listening here today and you are in the marketing or you're in the lead gen space, know that things are changing in, in a big way and you have to be prepared. You know, so whether it's the FCC or some other government regulatory body, uh, it's challenging, but it also opens doors to more ethical and consumer focused lead generation practices, which is something that we've all been talking about for so long. You go to these conferences, everybody's talking about transparency, transparency but it's never been transparent, right? So it's an exciting time for the industry to evolve, to meet these new standards. Um, and I'm certainly excited for it. And I'll share more as we, as we um, uh, encounter some of these changes here in the coming year. So listen, thanks for tuning in to the Lead Gen HQ podcast. Until next time, stay ahead of the curve in your lead generation strategies.